but uh, I am here to introduce introduce our uh, our guest uh, for our program today for for Grace House, which I think is just a a wonderful ministry. It's uh, I don't you know if you haven't had a chance to go down there and take a look at it or what have you, you should. It's it's pretty amazing. Um, but uh, Alana will be produ- or, uh, given the, the program today, and I just want to give you a little background about her. She's uh, she was born in South Carolina. Look, South Carolinian like I was in a small town called Clover, and uh, she went to school at the University of South Carolina, pursued her undergrad, undergraduate studies there, and then also got her master's in social work, and um, and then she and her husband were called up here for work, so we're lucky to have her. Um, they have two children, and uh, she is uh, she's given about 20 years to uh, to nonprofit work, which is a, a pretty amazing volume of work. Um, Anyway, I'm very excited to see this, and I'm going to turn it over to Alana. Thank you all. Is the microphone working well enough? Okay. I'm going to slide this over here a little bit so I don't have any clicker issues. Okay. So I'm really excited to be talking to you all today. Um, some, I know several faces in the room, some I don't know. Um, many people have heard me speak in the past about my previous position with Holston Habitat for Humanity, where I was for 16 years. Um, but I'm really excited to now shift focus and be working with Kingsport Homeless Ministries Grace House. Um, so I am their new director there, been on the job nearly three months. Um, but I've enjoyed my time there and I'm excited to be able to serve um, our homeless uh, neighbors in Kingsport. So, so you probably are a little familiar with us because of Dawn, um, but just in, in a review, uh, the Kingsport Homeless Ministry is an ecumenical Christian organization that seeks to serve our unhoused neighbors. Um, our mission is to raise awareness in Kingsport's faith-based communities concerning homelessness issues, and our ultimate goal is to provide a facility offering housing and the full spectrum of support services for our homeless neighbors in Kingsport, Tennessee. And the name of that facility is Grace House. Raise your hand if you knew this lovely woman. I did too. Uh, she founded Habitat in 1985 in this area, so I was very fortunate over my years there to get to know Miss Jo, and, um, and I was not looking for this opportunity with Grace House. It just kind of, you know, happened. I was approached by somebody who um, was connected with Grace House, and I thought, goodness, if I could help move this project closer to the finish line for Miss Jo, that means everything to me. So I'm really excited to be able to do this. Um, but... Ms. Jo, you know, she was leaving church one night, crack of lightning, and just out of her mouth came the words, where are the homeless sleeping tonight? It wasn't anything that was preached that night at church. You know, she talked about that, that there wasn't anything necessarily related to the scripture of the night. But um, she felt very much like in that moment, that crack of lightning, it was like a whisper from God um, telling her that she needed to do something, and she did. She was 100 at the time that happened. So, so none of us have any excuses if she, she could spur into action at 100. So when she was 102 in 2019, uh, the Kingsport Homeless Ministry was founded. A couple years after that, the building was purchased. The building on Sullivan Street uh, named Grace House, and she is the one who named the facility. That's my understanding. Um, and in 2022, uh, Tracy Reese, who is our shelter manager, was hired, and um, she has been there working um, with dedication, providing case management services to the folks who come in our doors off the street each day. So even though the shelter is not yet opened, she is there providing case management services Monday through Friday, and she's done great work there. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Grace House. So here's a picture of our building. Uh, Grace House is located at 700 East Sullivan Street. The building is over 13,000 square feet. 
That's pretty big. Um, it is a two-story building. The plan for the building is that the shelter will be upstairs. Uh, the entire upstairs will be shelter space. And downstairs will be the day services center where case management, mental health, job skills, financial literacy, all those other services can be provided to our folks, uh, drug and alcohol counseling, those things from that day services center downstairs. That's the vision that we have. And uh, the building, the original portion of the building was built in the 1940s. So to bring the facility to where we need it to be, there have been some extensive renovations going on since it was purchased. And I know that the community, there was a lot of um, talk in the, amongst the community when the building was purchased, a lot of excitement. Uh, but when you renovate a 13,000 square foot building, originally built in the 1940s, it takes some time, it takes um, lots of hands, and it takes lots of dollars. And sometimes when you open up walls, you run into things that you just weren't expecting. So I'm gonna give you an update on how that's going. Here is a drawing of the day center. This is the downstairs of the building. On each table, there is um, a copy of the drawing as well. You can pass around. Um, so you'll see the day center. We will have this area where folks can come in. Case management of other services will be in place here. We have our chapel space. We have administrative office space and overflow space for counseling and things like that. If if the office space in the day center is full, we have additional spaces here. Then we have our dental suite area. This is being done in partnership with Appalachian Miles for Smiles and LMU's Dental School. And so they will be providing dental students and vision and dental services will be available here free of charge to anyone who walks in. No income requirements, nothing. Someone can walk in and be served here. Um, they will do your regular cleanings, they will do um, extractions, they will even have the ability to manufacture um, dentures in that facility. So it's a great, great service to the folks that we serve um, and to other people that, um, that those organizations serve. And then we have additional space down here um, that uh, for the immediate time we will have a tenant in there. Um, but as we grow and we have additional services, we can expand into this area as well. So we have tons of space uh, that we are inviting people and partners from the community, from like-minded organizations that want to help this population. We're inviting them to talk with us and we can have conversations about how to partner with them and make space available in our day center. Because we know if we have all those services in our building, um, the chances of success for the folks uh, that come in off the streets is much greater um, because they can, they will know um, Tracy, they'll know the case managers, they will be familiar with them, and they'll be more likely to sit down and take those initial steps to get the support that they need. Next, we have a drawing of the upstairs, the shelter. So uh, this space is still under renovation, but we're getting very, very close. Uh, folks will enter up the stairs, check in with the night manager, and then they will go either to uh, the right, to the women's side, or to the left for the men's side. Our facility, when it's done, will have the uh, capacity for 20 men and 20 women. So we're really excited about that. As I mentioned, there's extensive renovation work going on. We've had to replace wiring. We've had to address plumbing. We've had to build sidewalks and ramps. Uh, we've had to knock down walls and create openings where they didn't exist to connect spaces. We've had to build walls in other places. Um, we've had to create uh, showers and uh, bathrooms where they didn't exist and laundry rooms where they didn't exist. So um, it, it has taken a lot of work and effort to get to the point that we're at now. And, um, you know, again, I've only been on the job three months, so I don't know what it looked like at the beginning, but from the stories and the pictures that Dawn has shared, um, 
you know, extensive work has been taking place there. And that does take time. So here's more pictures of kind of the progress. And we have several spaces that are looking pretty good. So um, this is a mock-up of a room in the men's shelter. Uh, we have one of the um, shower rooms. And then this is on the ladies' side. Um, this shows the bedrooms. There are several, four bedrooms all in a row there. So we have several spaces that are very, very close to finished, which we're excited about. And the most exciting thing, you guys will be first to know, at our board meeting earlier this week, the uh, board um, set a target open date of November 15th. Okay? So November 15th, that's the target open date. We do still have work that needs to be done. Okay? Um, and we do want to make sure that once the doors are open, that we are able to keep them open, that we have enough operational expenses covered to keep things open. So we are still needing the community support to make this happen. So let's talk about the day center and what the day center will be. <clears throat> so a day center is a safe place open during the day uh, where supportive services are provided. So you can see um, in this picture, we have three service providers. We have Tracy who works for uh, us we have Jane Ann Carrico, who works with the Housing Authority, and we have Jonathan Anderson. At the time, he was with the United Way. He is now with the, um, with the City of Kingsport, with the police department as the homeless liaison. So it's on a daily basis, we have those other service providers in our facility working together about um, addressing the needs of the clients that they, they work with. So that's, that's kind of the vision and the dream, having all those services together, um, meeting those needs and collaborating. The day center is also just a safe place to be during the day. So um, rather than hanging out in a park or in front of a store, um, folks are welcome to come in through our doors and pass their day there. There will be activities, there will be services to engage with if they're in our doors, um, but it is a safe alternative to other spaces where they might pass their time during the day. Oops. And the big thing we want to point out is that we are not trying to duplicate any services. Uh, we know that there are great programs throughout our community that are already doing food programs, clothing closets, things like that, medical services. Those are not things that we will be doing at Grace House, but we will be working with our partners at those other churches and organizations to address those needs for our folks. 953, I wanna point that out. This is the number of case management interactions that Tracy has had at Grace House since January. So 953 times someone has walked through our doors saying that they need help with one thing or another, okay? And um, so it might be help getting an ID. You know, if they've lost their vital records, they've lost their birth certificate, they don't have their photo ID, well, then they can't apply for a job or they can't apply for housing. So Tracy will help them get those things. Um, once the uh, folks have those things, then she can help get them set up uh, for housing or um, uh, for their benefits, things like that, okay? So there's lots of great work that's happening. Um, again, I think sometimes people drive by and they don't see that the shelter is open and they think, oh, not, not much is going on there, but absolutely, 953, that's a pretty big number. Um, so there's a lot of great work that is happening down at Grace House every single day. So right now, case management, referrals, um, those are things that Tracy assists with. Dental and vision services. Um, right now, we have Appalachian Miles for Smiles mobile trailer, um, and they typically are parked in the lot behind us in our backyard. Um, but soon, they'll be able to move into the facility and do it from within our walls. Uh, we also offer permanent mailing address that's a big deal. You know, if you're applying for social security benefits, 
um, you know, those, those things, the um, notices about recertifications or appointments, a lot of that comes through the mail. And if you are living on the streets and don't have a permanent address, that can be a major barrier. So our folks are permitted to use our address, and so they, they come to us to pick up their mail. Um, we also have restroom facilities right now that they can use. <clears throat> Into the future, we're going to be expanding. So we'll be offering, like I said, uh, in partnership with others, we'll have uh, mental health counseling. We hope to have addiction counseling in the building. Um, we would love to have probation services in the building because we know that that's a big barrier for a lot of the folks that we work with. Um, laundry facilities will be available in our building as well. Um, safe daytime spaces, financial literacy, and employment. These are all things that we are in communication with different service providers to be able to offer. Okay, now the shelter. <clears throat> So our plan is to offer a low barrier shelter. And low barrier shelters are ones that accept our neighbors as they are. Um, we know that many of the folks who are living on the streets have challenges. Typically that's why they are in that situation. So we have folks who perhaps um, may be struggling actively with mental health or they may be struggling with addiction, things like that. So our low barrier night shelter is intended to have as few requirements for entry as possible so that we can get them in the doors, get a roof over their head, and then once they are there, the night staff, Tracy, myself, others who are working with us can focus very intensely on relationship building and risk reduction. So once, yes, sir. How long can they stay? So those decisions are still in the works, but what we have discussed is around 60 days. If they are in there and they are doing what they need to do, they're not creating a problem for anyone else, and they're working with our day center services, that 60 days is about the goal that, that we would like. If they are doing everything they need to do, you know, there can be some leeway with that. You're welcome. Let's see. So, yeah, once they're in the doors, they get to know us. We can build relationships with them, build trust where they feel able to sit down and hopefully take those first steps. Because if anyone has um, experience with folks who are struggling with mental health or addiction, um, it's, it's not something that typically, you know, they make the decision the first time and they're successful. Sometimes it takes several tries um, to to take those steps to ask for help. So we know that in having stronger relationships with them, they are more likely to, um, to take those steps. So that's the big focus once they are in the doors with us. So future shelter services, in addition to the safe, dry sleeping space, there will be shower facilities, laundry facilities. We will be providing the personal hygiene items that they need. Um, and of course, they'll have access to the wide array of day services um, from the day center. So how can you help? I already mentioned we have an ambitious goal of November 15th. And I, I, you know, I know everyone in the community has kind of been waiting for this. I know we all have at Grace House. Dawn has worked so hard. So I'm gonna start with the words of Jo Morrison. She said, you are a blessing. You, excuse me, she said, you are blessed in order to be a blessing. So we are a nonprofit. We rely solely on donations. We are very proud that to date, all of the funding that we have, um, that we've received has been through private donations. It's been from individuals, churches, groups, um, clubs like yours, things like that. So um, we have not uh, received any grants or any um, other dollars that were not just individually raised like that. So um, those dollars, I know that Dawn has been stretching very well um, for a good amount of time through this renovation, but the renovation has been costly. So one of the 
main ways that folks can help support us is through donations. Okay. Another way to help support us is through volunteerism. We do still have some work to do in the renovation. It's not nearly as extensive as it was in year one, um, but there is still some work to be done uh, to be completely ready for November 15th. So volunteerism is another way to support. And then advocacy, you know, speaking out in the community, talking to others about the work that we're doing, um, sharing the, um, the need for additional shelter beds for our, our neighbors experiencing homelessness. That's, that's a big need in our community. We simply do not have enough beds. Um, I think the last pit count uh, was around 173, 174 um, homeless individuals on that one evening. Um, I know that Salvation Army has around 40 beds, I believe. Um, Hope Haven has around 22, I think. Um, you know, there just simply are not enough beds. So um, we need more, and, and we are excited to be able to offer that. So I'll talk about donation options. Um, all the donations that come in are used uh, towards the, the renovation. In addition, you know, we have the operating costs right now of our day center. So um, that's what donations, those are what the funds go to, okay? Um, donations can be made through our website. The website address is up on the screen. You each also have a copy of our brochure. Um, if you do not have one, we have extras that we can get you. Uh, but if you open up the brochure in the middle, it does talk about donation options there as well. Okay, And the website address is listed here on the brochure. Um, it also has the mailing address if you would be interested in donating but would rather not do it online. That's fine. So there are a variety of ways to give. Um, if you are inclined and you're tech savvy, you can even pull out your phone and scan the QR code on the screen and make a donation. Other ways to give are through in-kind goods and services. Now, Don mentioned that the folks from Mountaineer Tile are part of your Kiwanis Club. Um, they are one of the companies who have supported us through in-kind uh, donations. And so that's a donation of either goods or services. So these are the um, various companies who have supported our renovation efforts, either through um, in-kind goods or services. So these are great companies. They believe in the work that we do. Um, and so, you know, if, if you want to help good companies that do good things and you need some work, maybe reach out to one of these guys. Okay. Volunteering. Um, that, again, is another great way. So whether it is uh, just volunteering as an individual or as a group, or, you know, if you're connected um, with others that you think uh, have the skill set and the interest, you can encourage them to reach out about volunteering. Um, this picture uh, is three of our folks that are volunteering in the dental suite area. They're connected with Appalachian Miles for Smiles, and you can see all the great work that they're doing there in that space. Um, the primary volunteer need we have right now is related to the renovation. And so whether you have prior construction experience or not, um, we, can, we can utilize your help. Um, you know, there are tasks that need to be done that you do not have to be a general contractor to do. Um, and we, we can always teach you. Um, there are some things still that, you know, if you have prior skill experience that that you might be better suited for those tasks. Um, but if you have at all an interest in volunteering, we encourage you to reach out to us um, because again, we do have a few things that have to be finished before that November 15th goal. And we really want to, um, to make that target open date. Uh, we also will have some general office tasks. Once the renovation is done, we'll need some volunteer support with some of those types of things. Um, there could also be special projects that pop up every once in a while. Um, you know, we might, if, if you have a certain skill set that you think is, uh, would be of value to the folks that we work with, you know, if you have a background in finance and you want to come in and teach a class about basic financial literacy, 
wonderful. We'd love to talk to you. If you work in HR and you have um, you know, great knowledge about what it takes to present well in an interview and to prepare a good resume, we would absolutely love to uh, talk with you and you can volunteer with us in that capacity as well. There are many ways to get involved. And then another way um, is to organize a collection drive. So there are gonna be a number of items that we need, not just to open our doors, but to keep our doors open. Um, so there will be lots of items, you know, from uh, shampoo and soap for upstairs, office supplies, um, you know, pillows, um, shower curtains, things like that, all the way down to toilet paper. Those are things that we are gonna need. And the more of those things that the community can help provide, that helps reduce um, the, the burden to the organization to fund those things. So, um, you know, if you are interested in organizing a, um, a supply drive, I would encourage you to reach out to us and we can provide a list of items that would be useful to us um, and provide guidance on the things that, that we would need. Now I'm going to share a little story with you, okay? And um, this is not my story. This is this is Brian's story, um, as shared with me by Tracy. Again, she is our shelter manager who's been working there two years. So like many of us, Brian's life wasn't easy, and he made some mistakes. Unfortunately, his mistakes led to prison and a cycle of alcoholism and addiction. After serving his time, Brian was released with nowhere to go but the streets. One day, he was given a chance to make different choices. With continued case management support and encouragement from Tracy, Brian finally made the decision to enter treatment and make the needed changes in his life. Brian completed his program and briefly returned to the streets of Kingsport, where he continued to work with Tracy to secure housing. He has successfully maintained his recovery and an apartment of his own for two years. Brian no longer worries about where he's going to sleep at night. And now, instead of living to get high, he lives for his beloved pet cats, Oreo and Daisy. And this is not a picture of Brian. <laughs> for privacy reasons, we do not have a picture of the real Brian, but you get the effect. But this is a story that Tracy shared with me um, you know, and the successes at Grace House and at any of the organizations that serve this population, the successes can be hard fought. They can be few and far between, but there are absolutely successes out there. And with the support of others in working together, we want to have a lot more success stories like Brian's. Um, and we want to uh, address the needs of as many of our our uh, neighbors experiencing homelessness as we can. Okay, thank you. I've got my contact information up here, um, our website, our email and phone number. If anyone has any questions, please, please reach out to us. And if you have not been to our building yet, or even if you have, but maybe it was a while ago, if you would like to see where we are now, I'm personally inviting each and every one of you down there. Um, I drive a white SUV, so if you see a white SUV in the parking lot, just come to the door. I'm happy to talk with you. I'm happy to show you through the building and show you the progress of what we're doing um, and uh, talk about where we see it going. Any questions? <laughs>